Hello and welcome to today's mini lesson. We are going to be looking at Newton's three laws today. I'm going to get started straight away with number one, which is the law of inertia. Now, each of these laws can be seen or are present in most, if not all, sporting contexts that you have to be able to talk about and explain in your exam and course. So we're going to start off with the law of inertia, and this relates to the unwillingness of an object or a body to change. Okay, the unwillingness to change. And we can have a body or an object that is stationary. So let's just say we have a ball on a surface. That ball will not move unless an external force acts upon it. If that ball was in motion, then the rate and the magnitude and the direction of that motion will remain unchanged unless an external force acts upon it. So if we were to write down some key words for the definition of it, the law of inertia states that a body will remain either at rest or in motion unless an external force acts upon it. External force. So the ball, the body, the object, the performer, whatever it is in that sporting context or life for that matter, but we're going for the focus of sport here, that object will remain at rest or in its constant state of motion unless an external force acts upon it. And by external force, that means coming into contact with something else. So a ball flying through the air is coming into contact with the air particles in the form of drag and air resistance. A ball, which is floating in midair, is coming into contact with gravity, which is pulling it down. So you don't have to be able to see the external force, but it's a force outside of the body or the object. So law number one, the law of inertia, the body or the object will remain at rest or in its constant state of motion unless an external force to it acts upon it. And that is law number one, law of inertia. Now, the reason they're ordered this way, in my mind at least, is it almost describes the sequence of events, the sequence that things happen when we start to analyse a movement in sport. So let's say we have a ball that's currently at rest. The law of inertia states that that ball will stay resting there infinitely unless an external force acts upon it. Now when an external force does act upon it, we come to law two, which is the law of acceleration. The law of acceleration. Now what this says is the rate of change in motion when something acts upon that body is equivalent to or is proportionate to the size of the external force that's applied to it. So if I just put here external force, external force equals rate of change. There. So the law of acceleration, the size of the external force that comes into contact or acts upon the body that, or object that we're talking about, the size, the magnitude of that force is proportionate to the rate of change experienced by the body or the object. So let's say we've got a ball and we have a footballer. And the footballer is going to step up and about to kick that ball. Now until that boot contacts the ball, okay, let's say it's not a windy day, there's no air resistance, there's nothing like that, and the ground is preventing gravity from pulling this ball any further, that ball will rest there, because of the law of inertia, it will rest there infinitely. Until the footballer decides to kick this ball. Now if they were to tap it, so the external force is relatively low, then the rate of change experienced by the object is going to be 
almost equal to it or proportionate to it. The amount of force put into it is experienced and then becomes the output. Now, if it was a much bigger kick, so it's a goal kick or a free kick or a penalty or a more powerful shot, then the rate of change experienced will also be large. It's proportionate, almost conserved is another way of talking about it. So the bigger the external force, the bigger the change after that contact happens, after that action occurs. The smaller it is, the smaller the change. So they stay proportionate to each other. And that is the law of acceleration. And our final one is law of reaction. Possibly the most well-known one to, uh, to quote, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Every action has an equal but opposite reaction. Every action has a reaction. And what this is essentially saying is that when two objects or two surfaces or two forces come into contact, let's just say for here for example, one that which is being generated in one way, there will be an opposing reaction force that is put back or given off the body of the object that the first force was acting on. Okay, so take for example a jumper. Okay, we'll leave that board example there for now. But as that person is trying to jump up, what they're actually doing is generating a force in a downwards direction. All of their muscles are contracting, their legs are straightening, they're generating a downward force. Well, even though they end up going upwards. Well, that's because of the reaction force from the ground below them. So they apply a downward force, and at the point of that contact, we've got a force going down into the earth, we've got this meeting of these two surfaces, these two contact points, and there is an equal and opposite reaction force. So they become balanced. So if I just take away this definition here, just put a bit of a diagram. If we were to have a stationary object there, so a ball on a surface, and we've got a second one here, that has just come crashing into it with the force of that magnitude, there would be an equal and opposite reaction force that is given back off this blue ball onto the red one that just hit into it. So the way this could look could be that if these were fragile, let's say these were uh, like eggshells, and if they were to bump it or conquers you know, the, the playground game, one hitting onto the other isn't always going to break this second ball because there's an equal and opposite reaction force at that point of contact. And if that reaction force is great enough to you know, sort of overcome the integrity of the shell, then that could end up breaking this first object or this first conquer. So we've got these pairs of forces. And whenever we're talking about them, we talk about the action force, so the contact or the, the object of the body that is making contact with that resting second object, we could call it. We've got that action force and then the equal and opposite reaction force that acts through it. Now, depending on the speed, depending on the mass of these objects, depending on the overall force and the acceleration within these equations, the outcome is going to change, it's going to be different. But that doesn't mean that there isn't an equal but opposite reaction force in play. So, to quickly recap, Newton's three laws. First law is law of inertia. A body or an object will remain at rest or in constant motion unless an external force acts upon it. Law number two, of acceleration. The rate of change experienced by an object is directly proportionate to the magnitude of the external force that acts upon it. 
a small external force, small rate of change, small rate of acceleration. Large external force, large rate of, rate of change, large acceleration. And lastly, law number three, law of reaction. When two surfaces meet and there's contact, object one hits object two, applying an action force in a certain direction. There will be an equal but opposite reaction force coming back off object two and going in to object one that's just collided. And that is that. Newton's three laws, law of inertia, law of acceleration, and law of reaction. So I hope you found that new lesson useful and you enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you again soon.